And I've said it before, I'm very lucky that I love the gym. To me, the gym is like making love. Like sometimes, <laughs> so like, Simon, do you want to make love? I'm like, no, I want to go to the gym. And they're like, let's not be friends with them anymore, especially because we're talking about making love. Simon Miller, the bald, can't say that word whole, which is what we're going to have to change going forward. Go check out yesterday's video. Uh, seven fitness obstacles that are stopping your progress to understand all the reasons why. So look, I thought what a great way to embrace a, a new future. I'll be the flex assist. Simon the flex assist Miller. So that's how I'm going to start my videos for a while. It makes me sound like an arrogant ass. But maybe somewhere, oh, I said the word, oh my gosh, well that will go away. But maybe deep down, I am Simon the Flexus Miller. I guess you've got to say that with a little bit of a silly, silly voice. Today, we are going to run through a bunch of things that you can incorporate into your life right now to ensure that your fitness journey, that I'm no doubt you're probably going on even more than ever, given we're coming out of lockdown, kind of all that kind of stuff, is going to be more encouraged than ever. And these are just little tidbits that you can do in your own life. Hopefully they'll help. If they don't, there's a comment section for you to call me a dick let's do it number 10 is to ignore titles like this i know that sounds a little bit silly and you're probably rolling your eyes but while you know you're always going to be improving yourself day after day so tomorrow you will be more jacked than you are now my point is do not trust anyone that tells you they are going to be able to make 24 hour changes in your life you can't get abs you can't target specific fat to get rid of you can't grow your biceps you can't turn into Arnold Schwarzenegger. None of these things are true unless you are about to star in a Hollywood movie that is called, I don't know, Arnold to Arnie, where you are Arnold and you fall into a machine and you come out the other side as Arnold Schwarzenegger. That's not a thing. If it does happen, it's also a movie. So Arnold Schwarzenegger is going to be playing him. You will still be Arnold. The number one thing you need to take away from any kind of bit of fitness that you watch is it takes a long ass time. There's no quick fix. There's no easy thing. You've got to be consistent. You've got to take the bad times with the good times and you've just got to keep going. So another video the other day about how you can spot target fat on your thighs in a week. How are you going to teach your body to do that? It, this has all come out from the fact that if you do a bicep curl, you are spotting your biceps. Is that what you're focused on? But you can't do that with fat. And some people actually lose fat in different places. Like there's a study that says men hold on to a lot of fat in their chest, which is no bad thing because it makes your chest look bigger. But you can't do these things. So make sure that you know the things you're being told actually make sense and always make sure to go out there and double check. Research is important. Number nine, I was going to start with this one, but you know, I thought that was funnier. It's change your mindset. I saw this the other day. Somebody was going to go to the gym. And they're like, oh, I don't want to go to the gym. I don't want to work out. You've got to change that mindset. Fitness should be fun. Fitness should be a reward. Fitness should be something that you look forward to. And if it's not, figure out a way to make sure that it is. You know, it doesn't have to be going to the gym. It can be rock climbing, wrestling, MMA, boxing, and maybe you get into CrossFit. Maybe you just like doing classes like combat and body pump and all those things that the certain gyms do. There is not just one solution. I've said it before. I'm very lucky that I love the gym. To me, the gym is like making love. Like sometimes. <laughs> so like, Simon, do you want to make love? I'm like, no, I want to go to the gym. And they're like, let's not be friends with them anymore, especially because we're talking about making love. But that's a huge plus for me. But you've got to find, uh, you've got to find what your version of that is. And as soon as you incorporate it into your life in a positive sense, it's going to be so much easier to be doing. And you can be so much more excited about it. And when you're excited and positive and enthusiastic, you get to your goals and your achievements quicker. You just do, because you're going to be more motivated and you're just going to put more time into it. And when the more time you put into something, the more you get out of it. Tail as old as time itself. Number eight is that there is no such thing as a diet. The word diet is a bad, dirty word that needs to be eradicated from the English uh, language. It doesn't help that the first three letters are die. So diet, you're like, what, what, what? Like, no, no, no. I'm just going to put you on some, you know, food plan that you don't want to eat. Again, don't look at it that way. It's not a diet. It's not something that you're only going to do for six to eight weeks. You are going to find yourself a routine that works for you to the point that once again, Again, you look forward to doing it every single day. Make sure that you're enjoying your food. You can use, you know, there's sweeteners and there's seasonings and there's all kinds of things that you can incorporate so that you're getting on with what you're doing to the point that maybe when you get to the weekend, you don't even feel like you have to eat off plan, as they say, because you're like, no, I love the food I'm eating right now. So never, ever start a diet. It's just what, oh, what are you doing? I'm dieting right now. And you roll your eyes and you're just telling your brain, bad, bad, bad. No, switch it around. This is your lifestyle. You live a healthy lifestyle. That's your choice and you're feeling good about it, and sure, you may have a snack at the weekend, but you earned that snack. 
See, that's the better way to do it. That's why some people say, oh, it's not a cheat meal. It's a treat meal. I mean, I don't think you need to worry about that. But don't say you're on a diet. This is just what you're doing. And you're going to do it every single day. And when you see the rewards and you see how much better it's going to make you feel, you're going to be a happy chap. Number seven kind of ties into that. Make sure you hold yourself accountable. Now, this isn't beating yourself up. This isn't making yourself feel guilty. But if you do do something you know that you shouldn't have done, just try and figure out why and go from there. Like one day of bad eating is not going to ruin your diet. Not going to the gym for one day is not going to affect anything. But when all these things add up, there's a problem. So maybe you need to tell a friend. Maybe you need to get a trainer. They're great, but they're expensive, of course. But just make sure you have something in your life that you can be held accountable for. That way, if you do make a mistake, it's probably going to ensure that you don't do it again. That's just how it works, like your homework. If you used to go to school and there was no one to tell you to hand in your homework, you just wouldn't hand it in. Because you're like, well, pff, no, one's, no one's up my ass about this, so why do I care? But when you've got your teacher looking at you going, Simon, why didn't you do your homework? And you're like, well, because I'm stupid and I didn't want to. You're going to feel bad and hopefully then, you know, you're going to realize in your brain, oh, I've got to change this up and you do. So holding yourself accountable doesn't need to be a bad thing either. It's almost like a safety net. It's a get out of jail free card. It's just to ensure that when you do slip up a little bit, you talk about it, you move on and you ensure you don't do it again. That's what life is all about. Making mistakes is the greatest thing ever as long as you never do it again. Number six is taking progress pictures. Now, nobody hates taking pictures more than me. Ask my girlfriend. It's the equivalent of saying, Simon, build this nuclear rocket. In fact, I'd rather build a nuclear rocket than take pictures of myself. Don't know why. Clearly got a problem. But the, it's, a, it's such a great way. It's a great quantifier to see where you are and where you're going. It's like the scales. That's why the scales are such a good thing because you can see numbers moving and that's it just makes a lot of sense. And it's the same with progress pictures. If you take one in January and you take them week by week and you get to July and you can physically see the changes, you're like, great, everything I'm doing is correct. I shall keep on doing it. But if you're just guessing by looking in the mirror, which can be you can trick yourself in the mirror. Like Michael Jackson sang that song, I'm starting with the man in the mirror. He should have started with the mirror. There's something going on with that mirror. It lies to you all the damn time. But that is what they are there for. And they can suck. And if you are out of shape at first, yes, they're not going to be too pretty. But they'll be even better. And then you can go post them on Instagram. And that's all fitness is about. Let's not pretend otherwise. You get your before and after pictures. The first one, you're like this. The second, you're like... And you put it on Instagram, everyone likes to go, oh, babe, it's such a good job. And you get thousands of hearts and it's the best day ever. So that's why you should do it. Following on from that, number five is post your flipping selfies. Again, not something that I like to do because, again, I don't like doing it. But there, it's just such an easy way to make you feel good. Now, don't sort of tie all your feelings up in this because it's shallow, ultimately. I don't mean that in a bad way, but it is. It's shallow. Like, there's, there's only so much self-worth you can get from that. You need to work on your self-worth within. But again, if it's going to motivate you so that, again, tomorrow you're doing better than you did today, why wouldn't you do it? Like, I don't understand. There's a difference between posting a selfie and just being you know, out there all the time. But again, you know, if that's what you need to do to give yourself a boost, you should do it. But there is this uh, negativity a little bit around it, like, oh, you didn't go to a gym unless you took a selfie. Who cares? People can take a selfie when they go on holiday, when they buy a new car, when they move into a house, when they have a child, when they, I don't know, everything. When they get a new fish, like, oh, look, it's Goldie, my fish. It's like, well, I don't care. But it makes that person happy. So you should do it as well. Like, there's no reason not to do it. And also, it may actually even sort of spark you into life as well. Some people, I see it on Facebook, especially after lockdown, they will post the negative or, or the worst versions of themselves to say, oh man, again, I need to hold myself accountable. So I'm showing how bad I look now. I'm going to get into shape. And then that works even better because six months down the line, they post a new picture and everyone's like, oh, it's amazing. It's wonderful. And then you become king of the world or the queen. Number four is keep going. I kind of mentioned this earlier, so I'll be quick with this one, but keep going going. Because if you want to be in better shape tomorrow than you are today, and you don't do what you need to do today, then tomorrow you're not going to be there. So you just got to keep going. Bad day, good day, indifferent day. You don't want to do it. You kind of want to do it. Just make sure you go. I say all the time, if you don't want to go to the gym for an hour, or you just don't want to go, but your, your, your routine usually takes an hour, do half an hour. So I'm going to go for 30 minutes. because Then already you've just saved yourself half the time. And I bet you every single time you do go, with this in mind, you end up doing an hour anyway. And usually you have a better workout because of it, because the brain is a funny thing. Number three is if you do have one of these days, do exercises that you like. Don't do lunges, which are the equivalent to chopping your own head off and rolling it down a hill. Do, I don't know, cable flies, bench press, bicep curls. We're not overtrain if you've already done it. If you are working legs or whatever, pick the exercise that get you excited and that you want to do. 
Because it's like anything else. You like roller coasters, you're going to enjoy the theme park. If you don't like roller coasters, don't go to the theme park. It's the same in the gym. My big thing with the gym is that, again, it's all it's all supposed to be hard. Oh, the gym is hard and the gym's going to kick you in. Man, no, it's not. The gym is a place of love and candy floss and marshmallows where pixies come in and dance around the place and take you to the fairyland. That's what the gym is. And that's what it should always be. So... You don't have to punish yourself is what I'm saying. Choose the things that you like to do. Overall, are you going to have to do some things you don't like to do? Of course you are, because there are some really beneficial exercises. But again, just make sure that it's surrounding that is the good ones, and then they won't feel as bad. And you don't have to do them every week. Of course you don't. Should you incorporate them every now and then? Yes. But if you want to do one week off, one week off, who's going to get mad at you? The only person that's going to get mad at you is someone that's a jackass, and you don't have to worry about them. Number two, I kind of repeated myself, but hey, it's worth doubling down on is eat things that you like. Getting in shape is not chicken and greens, chicken and rice, chicken and this, chicken and that. It can be if that's what you want to do, but you can eat bread and you can eat, pff, I can't even think now, but I can't think of things people like to eat, but you can eat things. You know what it's like, bread isn't super healthy for you, but you're not chowing down on a pizza. Like you shouldn't eat a pizza, but there are things that you can do with bread to make it somewhat healthy. Again, there are things you can put on other foods to make them somewhat healthy too. And then you're going to, you're going to stick to your, well, I'm using the word now, but you are, you're going to stick to your diet better because you just will. That just stands to reason. Like if all of a sudden tomorrow, somebody created the no calorie pizza or the protein pizza, that was 100% protein and 0% everything else was really good for you and let you live for 700 years. Everybody in the world would be eating protein pizza. So be like, well, thank goodness for this. Why did it take so long? My nan could still be alive, but you didn't bring it. Blah, blah, blah. So just make sure you don't, again, fall down this terrible hole of it has to be miserable because it really doesn't. And number one, and this is something that we all have to accept, there is no end game. There is no end game. You may be 15 stone, you want to get to 12 stone. You think you get to 12 stone and then stop? Nope. Then you want to be 11 stone or then you want to be 13 stone with muscle. There's no end game. There's no end point. Once you're into this, you're into this as the NWO should say for life. You just are. Because as soon as it gets in your head and you get that bug, you just, you want to take it as far as, as, as you can go. Like I'm still, I'm genuine, I mean this from the bottom of my heart. I'm still flabbergasted where people say, oh, Miller, I want to look like you. I'm like, I don't look like me. I want to look like this guy. Because again, it's, it's the constant thing of the dangling carrot, the chasing of the carrot. And as soon as you, again, as soon as you do get that in your head, it just makes it so much easier. And it makes you far more productive because you realize, well, I'm going to train as hard as I can. I'm going to eat as well as I can. I'm going to do everything. I'm just going to kind of see where I end up. Like I have small miniature goals that I hope to hit. But overall, we're just going to have to throw it in the hands of life and see where we get to. There is no end game. It's not the Avengers. And there you go. 10 major changes you can make today. Ensure that you get jacked tomorrow. If you think, Simon, you sped through that video 100 miles an hour, I'm just going to be honest with you. It's so hot in the UK. I've had to turn my fan on halfway through. I'm going to try and hopefully get rid of the noise when I edit this afterwards. I am just dying. I'm absolutely dying. I can't do anything. I know it's not like a moaning mini. I've got a great job. I should shut the hell up. You're right. But under these studio lights... It is kicking my ass. So it probably wasn't my best attempt, but I like to get content out there. But please do like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel. Um, what else do I do? I've got a matron, patron. Matron. i got a matron. <laughs> She's helping me out right now because I can't handle the heat. i got a patron. I rejigged it yesterday. Check it out. i got merchandise. Sign me up at bigcartel.com. Uh, whatever. Do whatever you want. I can't even think. Again, it's so hot. I'm on Instagram and Twitter. I'll just talk to you soon. I love you. Watch other videos. Keep supporting as much as you can. Oh, I'm going to die. Flex assist. <laughs>